The Second Book of Samuel Chapter 1 After the death of Saul, when David was returned from the slaughter of the Amalekites, and had been two days in Ziklag, behold, a man came the third day out of the host from Saul with his clothes rent, and earth upon his head. And when he came to David, he fell to the earth, and did obeisance. Then David said unto him, Whence comest thou? And he said unto him, Out of the host of Israel I am escaped. And David said unto him, What is done? I pray thee, tell me. Then he said that the people is fled from the battle, and many of the people are overthrown and dead, and also Saul and Jonathan his son are dead. And David said unto the young man that told it him, How knowest thou that Saul and Jonathan his son be dead? Then the young man that told him answered, As I came to Mount Gilboa, behold, Saul leaned upon his spear, and, lo, the chariots and horsemen followed hard after him. And when he looked back, he saw me, and called me, and I answered him, Here am I. And he said unto me, Who art thou? And I answered him, I am an Amalekite. Then said he unto me, I pray thee, come upon me and slay me, for anguish is come upon me, because my life is yet whole in me. So I came upon him and slew him, and because I was sure that he could not live, after that he had fallen, I took the crown that was upon his head, and the bracelet that was on his arm, and brought them hither unto my Lord. Then David took hold of his clothes, and rent them, and likewise all the men that were with him. And they mourned, and wept, and fasted until even. For Saul and for Jonathan his son, and for the people of the Lord, and for the house of Israel, because they were slain with the sword. Afterward David said unto the young man that told it him, Whence art thou? And he answered, I am the son of a stranger, an Amalekite. And David said unto him, How wast thou not afraid to put forth thine hand to destroy the anointed of the Lord? Then David called one of his young men, and said, Go near, and fall upon him. And he smote him, that he died. Then said David unto him, Thy blood be upon thine own head, for thine own mouth hath testified against thee, saying, I have slain the Lord's anointed. Then David mourned with this lamentation over Saul and over Jonathan his son. Also he bade them teach the children of Judah to shoot, as it is written in the book of Jasher. O noble Israel, he is slain upon thy high places. How are the mighty overthrown? Tell it not in Gath, nor publish it in the streets of Ashkelon lest the daughters of the Philistines rejoice, lest the daughters of the uncircumcised triumph. Ye mountains of Gilboa, upon you be neither dew nor rain, nor be there fields of offerings, for there the shield of the mighty is cast down. The shield of Saul, as though he had not been anointed with oil. The bow of Jonathan never turned back, Neither did the sword of Saul return empty from the blood of the slain and from the fat of the mighty. Saul and Jonathan were lovely and pleasant in their lives, and in their deaths they were not divided. They were swifter than eagles, they were stronger than lions. Ye daughters of Israel, weep for Saul, which clothed you in scarlet with pleasures and hanged ornaments of gold upon your apparel. How were the mighty slain in the midst of the battle? O Jonathan, thou wast slain in thine high places. Woe is me for thee, my brother Jonathan. Very kind hast thou been unto me. Thy love to me was wonderful, passing the love of women. How are the mighty overthrown? and the weapons of war destroyed. 2 Samuel Chapter 2 
After this, David asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up into any of the cities of Judah? And the Lord said unto him, Go up. And David said, Whither shall I go? He then answered, Unto Hebron. So David went up thither, and his two wives also, Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and Abigail, Nabal's wife, the Carmelite. And David brought up the men that were with him, every man with his household, and they dwelt in the cities of Hebron. Then the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. And they told David, saying, that the men of Jabesh-Gilead buried Saul. And David sent messengers unto the men of Jabesh-Gilead, and said unto them, Blessed are ye of the Lord, that ye have showed such kindness unto your lord Saul, that you have buried him. Therefore now the Lord show mercy and truth unto you, and I will recompense you this benefit, because ye have done this thing. Therefore now let your hands be strong, and be you valiant, albeit your master Saul be dead. Yet nevertheless the house of Judah hath anointed me king over them. But Abner the son of Ner, that was captain of Saul's host, took Ishbosheth the son of Saul, and brought him to Mahanaim, and made him king over Gilead, and over the Asherites, and over Jezreel, and over Ephraim, and over Benjamin, and over all Israel. Ishbosheth, Saul's son, was forty years old when he began to reign over Israel, and reigned two years. But the house of Judah followed David. And the time which David reigned in Hebron over the house of Judah was seven years and six months. And Abner, the son of Ner, and the servants of Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, went out of Mahanaim to Gibeon. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, and the servants of David, went out and met one another by the pool of Gibeon. And they sat down, the one on the one side of the pool, and the other on the other side of the pool. Then Abner said to Joab, Let the young man now arise, and play before us. And Joab said, Let them arise. Then there arose and went over twelve of Benjamin by number which pertained to Ishbosheth, the son of Saul, and twelve of the servants of David. And every one caught his fellow by the head, and thrust his sword in his fellow's side. So they fell down together, wherefore the place was called Helketh Hazurim, which is in Gibeon. And the battle was exceedingly sore that same day, for Abner and the men of Israel fell before the servants of David. And there were three sons of Zeruiah there, Joab, and Abishai, and Asahel. And Asahel was as light on foot as a wild roe. And Asahel followed after Abner, and in going he turned neither to the right hand nor to the left from Abner. Then Abner looked behind him and said, Art thou Asahel? And he answered, Yea. Then Abner said, Turn thee either to the right hand or to the left, and take one of the young men, and take thee his weapons. And Asahel would not depart from him. And Abner said to Asahel, Depart from me, wherefore should I smite thee to the ground? How then should I be able to hold up my face to Joab thy brother? And when he would not depart, Abner, with the hinder end of the spear, smote him under the fifth rib that the spear came out behind him, and he fell down there, and died in his place. And as many as came to the place where Asahel fell down and died, stood still. Joab also, and Abishai, pursued after Abner. And the sun went down, when they were come to the hill Amma, that lieth before Gaia, by the way of the wilderness of Gibeon. And the children of Benjamin gathered themselves together after Abner, and were on an heap, and stood on the top of an hill. Then Abner called to Joab, and said, Shall the sword devour forever? Knowest thou not 
that it will be bitterness in the latter end? How long then shall it be? Or thou bid the people return from following their brethren? And Job said, As God liveth, if thou hadst not spoken, surely even in the morning the people had departed every one back from his brother. So Joab blew a trumpet, and all the people stood still, and pursued after Israel no more, neither fought they any more. And Abner and his men walked all that night through the plain, and went over Jordan, and passed through all Bithron, till they came to Mahanaim. Job also returned back from Abner, and when he had gathered all the people together, there lacked of David's servants nineteen men, and a sahel. But the servants of David had smitten of Benjamin and of Abner's men, so that three hundred and threescore men died. And they took up a sahel and buried him in the sepulchre of his father, which was in Bethlehem. And Job and his men went all night. And when they came to Hebron, the day arose. Second Samuel Chapter 3 There was then long war between the house of Saul and the house of David, but David waxed stronger, and the house of Saul waxed weaker. And unto David were children born in Hebron, and his eldest son was Amnon of Ahinoam the Jezreelitess, and his second was Kiliab of Abigail the wife of Nabal the Carmelite, and the third Absalom the son of Maacah, the daughter of Talmai, the king of Geshur, and the fourth, Adonijah, the son of Haggith, and the fifth, Shephatiah, the son of Abital, and the sixth, Ithream, by Eglah, David's wife. These were born to David in Hebron. Now while there was war between the house of Saul and the house of David, Abner made all his power for the house of Saul. And Saul had a concubine named Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah. And Ishbosheth said to Abner, Wherefore hast thou gone into my father's concubine? Then was Abner very wroth for the words of Ishbosheth, and said, Am I a dog's head, which against Judah do show mercy this day unto the house of Saul thy father to his brethren and to his neighbors, and have not delivered thee into the hand of David? that thou chargest me this day with a fault concerning this woman? So do God to Abner, and more also, except as the Lord hath sworn to David, even so I do to him, to remove the kingdom from the house of Saul, that the throne of David may be established over Israel and over Judah, even from Dan to Beersheba. And he durst no more answer to Abner, for he feared him. Then Abner sent messengers to David on his behalf, saying, Whose is the land? Who should also say, Make covenant with me, and behold, mine hand shall be with thee, to bring all Israel unto thee? Who said, Well, I will make a covenant with thee, but one thing I require of thee, that is, that thou see not my face, except thou bring Michael, Saul's daughter, when thou comest to see me? Then David sent messengers to Ishbosheth, Saul's son, saying, Deliver me my wife, Michael, which I married for an hundred foreskins of the Philistines. And Ishbosheth sent, and took her from her husband Paltiel, the son of Laish. And her husband went with her, and came weeping behind her, unto Bahurim. Then said Abner unto him, Go, and return. So he returned. And Abner had communication with the elders of Israel, saying, Ye fought for David in times past, that he might be your king. Now then do it, for the Lord hath spoken of David, saying, By the hand of my servant David, I will save my people Israel out of the hands of the Philistines, people out of the hands of the Philistines, and out of the hands of all their enemies. Also Abner spake to Benjamin, and afterward, Abner went to speak with David in Hebron, concerning all that Israel was content with, and the whole house of Benjamin. So Abner came to David to Hebron, having twenty men with him, 
And David made a feast unto Abner, and to the men that were with him. Then Abner said unto David, I will rise up, and go gather all Israel unto my lord the king, that they may make a covenant with thee, and that thou mayest reign over all that thine heart desireth. Then David let Abner depart, who went in peace. And behold, the servants of David and Joab came from the camp, and brought a great prey with them. But Abner was not with David in Hebron, for he had sent him away, and he departed in peace. When Joab and all the host that was with him were come, men told Joab, saying, Abner the son of Ner came to the king, and he hath sent him away, and he is gone in peace. Then Joab came to the king, and said, What hast thou done? Behold, Abner came unto thee, why hast thou sent him away? And he is departed. Thou knowest Abner the son of Ner, for he came to deceive thee, and to know thy outgoing and ingoing, and to know all that thou doest. And when Joab was gone out from David, he sent messengers after Abner, which brought him again from the well of Sirah, unknowing to David. And when Abner was come again to Hebron, Joab took him aside in the gate to speak with him peaceably, and smote him under the fifth rib, that he died for the blood of Asahel his brother. And when afterward it came to David's ear, he said, I and my kingdom are guiltless before the Lord for ever, concerning the blood of Abner the son of Ner. Let the blood fall on the head of Joab, and on all his father's house, that the house of Joab be never without some that have running issues, or leper, or that leaneth on a staff, or that doeth fall on the sword, or that lacketh bread. So Joab and Abishai his brother slew Abner because he had slain their brother Asahel at Gibeon in battle. And David said to Joab, and to all the people that were with him, Rent your clothes, and put on sackcloth, and mourn before Abner. And King David himself followed the bier. And when they had buried Abner in Hebron, the king lift up his voice, and wept beside the sepulchre of Abner. And all the people wept. And the king lamented over Abner, and said, Died Abner as a fool dieth? Thine hands were not bound, nor thy feet tied in fetters of brass. But as a man falleth before wicked men, so didst thou fall. And all the people wept again for him. Afterward all the people came to cause David eat meat while it was yet day. But David swore, saying, So do God to me, and more also, if I taste bread, or aught else till the sun be down. And all the people knew it, and it pleased them, as whatsoever the king did pleased all the people. For all the people and all Israel understood that day how that it was not the king's deed that Abner the son of Ner was slain. And the king said unto his servants, Know ye not that there is a prince and a great man fallen this day in Israel? And I am this day weak and newly anointed king. And these men, the sons of Zeruiah, be too hard for me. The Lord reward the doer of evil according to his wickedness. Second Samuel Chapter 4 and when Saul's son heard that Abner was dead in Hebron, then his hands were feeble, and all Israel was afraid. And Saul's son had two men that were captains of bands, the one called Baana, and the other called Rechab, the sons of Rimmon, a Berethite, of the children of Benjamin, for Bereth was reckoned to Benjamin, because the Berethites fled to Gittim, and sojourned there unto this day. And Jonathan, Saul's son, had a son that was lame on his feet. He was five years old when the tidings came of Saul and Jonathan out of Israel. Then his nurse took him and fled away, and as she made haste to flee, the child fell 
and began to halt. And his name was Mephibosheth. And the sons of Rimmon the Berethite, Rechab and Baana, went and came in the heat of the day to the house of Ishbosheth, who slept on a bed at noon. And behold, Rechab and Baana his brother came into the midst of the house, as they would have wheat, and they smote him under the fifth rib and fled. For when they came into the house, he slept on his bed in his bedchamber, and they smote him and slew him and beheaded him and took his head and got them away through the plain all the night. And they brought the head of Ishbosheth unto David to Hebron, and said to the king, Behold, the head of Ishbosheth, Saul's son, thine enemy, who sought after thy life, and the Lord hath avenged my lord the king this day of Saul, and of his seed. Then David answered Rechab and Baana his brother, the sons of Rimmon the Berethite, and said unto them, As the Lord liveth, who hath delivered my soul out of all adversity, when one told me, and said that Saul was dead, thinking to have brought good tidings, I took him and slew him in Ziklag, who thought that I would have given him a reward for his tidings. How much more when wicked men have slain a righteous person in his own house and upon his bed, shall I not now therefore require his blood at your hand and take you from the earth? Then David commanded his young men, and they slew him, and cut off their hands and their feet, and hanged them up over the pool in Hebron. But they took the head of Ishbosheth and buried it in the sepulcher of Abner in Hebron. Second Samuel Chapter 5 Then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron, and said thus, Behold, we are thy bones and thy flesh, and in time past, when Saul was our king, thou leddest Israel in and out, and the Lord hath said to thee, Thou shalt feed my people Israel, and thou shalt be a captain over Israel. So all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron, and King David made a covenant with them in Hebron before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. David was thirty years old when he began to reign, and he reigned forty years. In Hebron he reigned over Judah seven years and six months, and in Jerusalem he reigned thirty and three years over all Israel and Judah. The king also and his men went to Jerusalem unto the Jebusites, the inhabitants of the land, who spake unto David, saying, Except thou take away the blind and the lame, thou shalt not come in hither, thinking that David could not come thither. But David took the fort of Zion. This is the city of David. Now David had said the same day, Whosoever smiteth the Jebusites, and getteth up to the gutters, and smiteth the lame and blind, which David's soul hateth, I will prefer him. Therefore they said, The blind and the lame shall not come into that house. So David dwelt in that fort, and called it the city of David, and David built round about it, from Milo and inward. And David prospered and grew, for the Lord God of hosts was with him. Hiram, also king of Tyre, sent messengers to David, and cedar trees, and carpenters, and masons for walls, and they built David an house. Then David knew that the Lord had established him king over Israel, and that he had exalted his kingdom for his people Israel's sake. And David took him more concubines and wives out of Jerusalem, after he was come from Hebron, and more sons and daughters were born to David. And these be the names of the sons that were born unto him in Jerusalem, Shemua, Shobab, and Nathan, 
and Solomon, and Ibar, and Elishua, and Nephik, and Japhia, and Elishima, and Eliada, and Eliphalet. But when the Philistines heard that they had anointed David king over Israel, all the Philistines came up to seek David, and when David heard, he went down to a fort. But the Philistines came and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. Then David asked counsel of the Lord, saying, Shall I go up to the Philistines? Wilt thou deliver them into mine hands? And the Lord answered David, Go up, for I will doubtless deliver the Philistines into thine hands. Then David came to baal Perazim, and smote them there, and said, The Lord hath divided mine enemies asunder before me, as waters be divided asunder. Therefore he called the name of that place baal Perazim, And there they left their images, and David and his men burnt them. Again the Philistines came up, and spread themselves in the valley of Rephaim. And when David asked counsel of the Lord, he answered, Thou shalt not go up, but turn about behind them, and come upon them over against the mulberry trees. And when thou hearest the noise of one going in the tops of the mulberry trees, then remove, for then shall the Lord go out before thee to smite the host of the Philistines. Then David did so as the Lord had commanded him, and smote the Philistines from Geba until thou come to Gezer. Second Samuel Chapter 6 Again David gathered together all the chosen men of Israel, even thirty thousand. And David arose, and went with all the people that were with him from Bailey of Judah, to bring up from thence the ark of God, whose name is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, that dwelleth upon it between the cherubims. And they put the ark of God upon a new cart, and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, that was in Gibeah. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, did drive the new cart. And when they brought the ark of God out of the house of Abinadab, that was at Gibeah, Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel played before the Lord on all instruments made of fir, and on harps, and on psalteries, and on timbrels, and on cornets, and on cymbals. And when they came to Nacon's threshing floor, Uzzah put his hand to the ark of God, and held it, for the oxen did shake it. And the Lord was very wroth with Uzzah, and God smote him in the same place for his fault. And there he died, by the ark of God. And David was displeased, because the Lord had smitten Uzzah. And he called the name of the place Perez Uzzah until this day. Therefore David that day feared the Lord, and said, How shall the ark of the Lord come to me? So David would not bring the ark of the Lord unto him into the city of David. But David carried it into the house of Obed-Edom, a Gittite. And the ark of the Lord continued in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And one told King David, saying, The Lord hath blessed the house of Obed-Edom and all that he hath because of the ark of God. Therefore David went and brought the ark of God from the house of Obed-Edom into the city of David with gladness. And when they that bare the ark of the Lord had gone six paces, he offered an ox and a fat beast. And David danced before the Lord with all his might, and was girded with a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought the ark of the Lord with shouting and sound of trumpet. And as the ark of the Lord came into the city of David, Michael, Saul's daughter, looked through a window, and saw King David leap and dance before the Lord. And she despised him in her heart. And when they had brought in the ark of the Lord, they set it in his place, in the midst of the tabernacle that David had pitched for it. 
Then David offered burnt offerings and peace offerings before the Lord. And as soon as David had made an end of offering burnt offerings and peace offerings, he blessed the people in the name of the Lord of hosts, and gave among all the people, even among the whole multitude of Israel, as well to the women as men, to every one a cake of bread, and a piece of flesh, and a bottle of wine. So all the people departed, every one to his house. Then David returned to bless his house, and Michael, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David, and said, Oh, how glorious was the king of Israel this day, which was uncovered today in the eyes of the maidens of his servants, as a fool uncovereth himself. Then David said unto Michael, It was before the Lord, which chose me rather than thy father, and all his house, and commanded me to be ruler over the people of the Lord, even over Israel. And therefore will I play before the Lord, and will yet be more vile than thus, and will be low in mine own sight. And of the very same maidservants which thou hast spoken of, shall I be had in honor. Therefore Michael, the daughter of Saul, had no child unto the day of her death. 2 Samuel Chapter 7 Afterward, when the king sat in his house, and the Lord had given him rest round about from all his enemies, the king said unto Nathan the prophet, Behold, now I dwell in an house of cedar trees, and the ark of God remaineth within the curtains. Then Nathan said unto the king, Go, and do all that is in thine heart, for the Lord is with thee. And the same night the word of the Lord came unto Nathan, saying, Go and tell my servant David, thus saith the Lord, Shalt thou build me an house for my dwelling? For I have dwelt in no house since the time that I brought the children of Israel out of Egypt unto this day, but have walked in a tent and tabernacle. In all the places wherein I have walked with all the children of Israel, spake I one word with any of the tribes of Israel when I commanded the judges to feed my people Israel? Or said I, Why build ye not me an house of cedar trees? Now therefore, so say unto my servant David, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, I took thee from the sheepcote following the sheep, that thou mightest be ruler over my people, over Israel, and I was with thee wheresoever thou hast walked, and have destroyed all thine enemies out of thy sight, and have made thee a great name, like unto the name of the great men that are in the earth. Also I will appoint a place for my people Israel, and will plant it, that they may dwell in a place of their own, and move no more, neither shall wicked people trouble them any more as before time and since the time that I set judges over my people of Israel. And I will give thee rest from all thine enemies. Also the Lord telleth thee that he will make thee an house. And when thy days be fulfilled, thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, and I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy body, and will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son, and if he sin, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the plagues of the children of men. But my mercy shall not depart away from him, as I took it from Saul, whom I have put away before thee. And thine house shall be established, and thy kingdom forever before thee. Even thy throne shall be established for ever. According to all these words, and according to all this vision, Nathan spake thus unto David. Then King David went in, and sat before the Lord, and said, Who am I, O Lord God, and what is mine house, that thou hast brought me hither to? And this was yet a small thing in thy sight, O Lord God. Therefore thou hast spoken also of thy servant's house for a great while. 
But doth this appertain to man, O Lord God? And what can David say more unto thee? For thou, Lord God, knowest thy servant. For thy word's sake, and according to thine own heart, hast thou done all these great things, to make them known unto thy servant. Wherefore thou art great, O Lord God, for there is none like thee, neither is there any God besides thee, according to all that we have heard with our ears. And what one people in the earth is like thy people, like Israel, whose God went and redeemed them to himself, that they might be his people, and that he might make him a name, and do for you great things, and terrible for thy land, O Lord, even for thy people, whom thou redeemest to thee out of Egypt, from the nations and their gods. For thou hast ordained to thyself thy people Israel to be thy people forever, and thou, Lord, art become their God. Now therefore, O Lord God, confirm forever the word that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and his house, and do as thou hast said, and let thy name be magnified forever by them that shall say, The Lord of hosts is the God over Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. For thou, O Lord of hosts, God of Israel, hast revealed unto thy servant, saying, I will build thee an house. Therefore hath thy servant been bold to pray this prayer unto thee. Therefore now, O Lord God, for thou art God, and thy words be true, and thou hast told this goodness unto thy servant. Therefore now let it please thee to bless the house of thy servant, that it may continue forever before thee. For thou, O Lord God, hast spoken it. And let the house of thy servant be blessed forever with thy blessing. Second Samuel Chapter 8 After this now, David smote the Philistines, and subdued them. And David took the bridle of bondage out of the hand of the Philistines. And he smote Moab, and measured them with a cord, and cast them down to the ground. He measured them with two cords to put them to death, and with one full cord to keep them alive. So became the Moabites David's servants, and brought gifts. David smote also Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah, as he went to recover his border at the river Euphrates. And David took of them a thousand and seven hundred horsemen, and twenty thousand footmen. And David destroyed all the chariots, but he reserved an hundred chariots of them. Then came the Aramites of Demesic to succor Hadadezer, king of Zobah. But David slew of the Aramites two and twenty thousand men. And David put a garrison in Aram of Demesic. And the Aramites became servants to David, and brought gifts. And the Lord saved David wheresoever he went. And David took the shields of gold that belonged to the servants of Hadadezer, and brought them to Jerusalem. And out of Beta and Berothai, cities of Hadadezer, King David brought exceedingly much brass. Then Toai, king of Hamath, heard how David had smitten all the host of Hadadezer. Therefore Toai sent Joram, his son, unto King David, to salute him and to rejoice with him, because he had fought against Hadadezer and beaten him. For Hadadezer had war with Toai, who brought with him vessels of silver and vessels of gold and vessels of brass. And King David dedicated them unto the Lord with the silver and gold that he had dedicated of all the nations which he had subdued, of Aram and of Moab and of the children of Ammon and of the Philistines and of Amalek 
and of the spoil of Hadadezer, the son of Rehob, king of Zobah. So David got a name after that he returned, and had slain of the Aramites in the valley of Salt eighteen thousand men. And he put a garrison in Edom. Throughout all Edom put he soldiers, and all they of Edom became David's servants, and the Lord kept David whithersoever he went. Thus David reigned over all Israel, and executed judgment and justice unto all his people. And Joab, the son of Zeruiah, was over the host. And Jehoshaphat, the son of Ahilad, was recorder. And Zadok, the son of Ahitub, and Ahimelech, the son of Abiathar, were the priests. And Sariah, the scribe. And Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, and the Kirathites, and the Pelathites, and David's sons were chief rulers. Second Samuel, chapter nine. And David said, "Is there yet any man left of the house of Saul, that I may show him mercy for Jonathan's sake?" And there was of the household of Saul a servant whose name was Ziba. And when they had called him unto David. The king said unto him, Art thou Ziba? And he said, I, thy servant, am he. Then the king said, Remaineth there yet none of the house of Saul on whom I may show the mercy of God? Ziba then answered the king, Jonathan hath yet a son lame of his feet. Then the king said unto him, Where is he? And Ziba said unto the king. Behold, he is in the house of Maker, the son of Amiel of Lodeber. Then King David sent and took him out of the house of Maker, the son of Amiel of Lodeber. Now when Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, was come unto David, he fell on his face and did reverence. And David said, Mephibosheth. And he answered, Behold, thy servant. Then David said unto him, Fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the fields of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. And he bowed himself and said, What is thy servant, that thou shouldest look upon such a dead dog as I am? Then the king called Ziba Saul's servant, and said unto him. I have given unto thy master's son all that pertain to Saul and to all his house. Thou therefore and thy sons and thy servants shall till the land for him, and bring in that thy master's son may have food to eat. And Mephibosheth, thy master's son, shall eat bread always at my table. Now Ziba had fifteen sons and twenty servants. Then said Ziba unto the king. According to all that my lord the king hath commanded his servant, so shall thy servant do, that Mephibosheth may eat at my table as one of the king's sons. Mephibosheth also had a young son named Micah, and all that dwelled in the house of Ziba were servants unto Mephibosheth. And Mephibosheth dwelt in Jerusalem, for he did eat continually at the king's table, and was lame on both his feet. Second Samuel, chapter ten. After this, the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanan his son reigned in his stead. Then said David, "I will show kindness unto Hanan the son of Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me." And David sent his servants to comfort him for his father. So David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan their lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honour thy father, that he hath sent comforters to thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city, and to spy it out, and to overthrow it? Wherefore Hanan took David's servants, and shaved off the half of their beard, and cut off their garments in the middle, even to their buttocks, and sent them away. 
when it was told unto David, he sent to meet them, for the men were exceedingly ashamed. And the king said, Tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown, then return. And when the children of Ammon saw that they stank in the sight of David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Aramites of the house of Rehob and the Aramites of Zobah, twenty thousand footmen, and of King Maacah a thousand men, and of Ishtob twelve thousand men. And when David heard of it, he sent Joab and all the host of the strong men. And the children of Ammon came out and put their army in array at the entering in of the gate. And the Aramites of Zobah and of Rehob and of Ishtob and of Maacah were by themselves in the field. When Joab saw that the front of the battle was against him before and behind, he chose of all the choice of Israel and put them in array against the Aramites. And the rest of the people he delivered into the hand of Abishai, his brother, that he might put them in array against the children of Ammon. And he said, If the Aramites be stronger than I, thou shalt help me. And if the children of Ammon be too strong for thee, I will come and succor thee. Be strong, and let us be valiant for our people, and for the cities of our God, and let the Lord do that which is good in his eyes. Then Joab and the people that was with him joined in battle with the Aramites, who fled before him. And when the children of Ammon saw that the Aramites fled, they fled also before Abishai, and entered into the city. So Joab returned from the children of Ammon, and came to Jerusalem. And when the Aramites saw that they were smitten before Israel, they gathered them together, and had a razor sent, and brought out the Aramites that were beyond the river. And they came to Helam. And Shobuk, the captain of the host of Hadadezer, went before them. When it was showed David, then he gathered all Israel together, and passed over Jordan, and came to Helam. And the Aramites set themselves in array against David, and fought with him. And the Aramites fled before Israel, and David destroyed seven hundred chariots of the Aramites, and forty thousand horsemen, and smote Shobek, the captain of his host, who died there. And when all the kings that were servants to Hadadezer saw that they fell before Israel, they made peace with Israel, and served them. And the Aramites feared to help the children of Ammon any more. Second Samuel Chapter 11 And when the year was expired, in the time when kings go forth to battle, David sent Joab and his servants with him, and all Israel, who destroyed the children of Ammon, and besieged Rabbah. But David remained in Jerusalem. And when it was evening tide, David arose out of his bed, and walked upon the roof of the king's palace, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself. And the woman was very beautiful to look upon. And David sent, and inquired what woman it was. And one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, wife to Uriah the Hittite? Then David sent messengers, and took her away, and she came unto him, and he lay with her. Now she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. And the woman conceived. Therefore she sent, and told David, and said, I am with child. Then David sent to Joab, saying, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent Uriah to David. And when Uriah came unto him, David demanded him how Joab did, and how the people fared, and how the war prospered. Afterward David said to Uriah, Go down to thine house, and wash thy feet. So Uriah departed out of the king's palace, and the king sent a present after him. But Uriah slept at the door of the king's palace with all the servants of his lord, and went not down to his house. Then they told David, saying, Uriah went not down to his house. 
And David said unto Uriah, Comest thou not from thy journey? Why didst thou not go down to thine house? Then Uriah answered David, The ark and Israel and Judah dwell in tents, and my lord Joab and the servants of my lord abide in the open fields. Shall I then go into mine house to eat and drink and lie with my wife? By thy life and by the life of thy soul I will not do this thing. Then David said unto Uriah, Tarry yet this day, and tomorrow I will send thee away. So Uriah abode in Jerusalem that day and the morrow. Then David called him, and he did eat and drink before him, and he made him drunk. And at even he went out to lie on his couch with the servants of his lord, but went not down to his house. And on the morrow David wrote a letter to Joab, and sent it by the hand of Uriah. And he wrote thus in the letter, Put ye Uriah in the forefront of the strength of the battle, and recule ye back from him, that he may be smitten and die. So when Joab besieged the city, he assigned Uriah unto a place where he knew that strong men were. And the men of the city came out and fought with Joab. And there fell of the people of the servants of David. And Uriah the Hittite also died. Then Joab sent and told David all the things concerning the war. And he charged the messenger, saying, When thou hast made an end of telling all the matters of the war unto the king, and if the king's anger arise, so that he say unto thee, Wherefore approached ye unto the city to fight? Knew ye not that they would hurl from the wall? Who smote Abimelech, son of Jerobesheth? Did not a woman cast a piece of a millstone upon him from the wall, and he died in Thebes? Why went you nigh the wall? Then say thou, Thy servant Uriah the Hittite is also dead. So the messenger went, and came, and showed David all that Joab had sent him for. And the messenger said unto David, Certainly men prevailed against us, and came out unto us into the field, but we pursued them unto the entering of the gate. But the shooters shot from the wall against thy servants, and some of the king's servants be dead, and thy servant Uriah the Hittite is also dead. Then David said unto the messenger, Thus shalt thou say unto Joab, Let not this thing trouble thee, for the sword devoureth one as well as another. Make thy battle more strong against the city, and destroy it, and encourage thou him. And when the wife of Uriah heard that her husband Uriah was dead, she mourned for her husband. So when the morning was past, David sent and took her into his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. 2 Samuel, chapter 12. Then the Lord sent Nathan unto David, who came to him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceedingly many sheep and oxen, but the poor had none at all, save one little sheep, which he had bought and nourished up, and it grew up with him and with his children also, and did eat of his own morsels, and drank of his own cup, and slept in his bosom, and was unto him as his daughter. Now there came a stranger unto the rich man, who refused to take of his own sheep, and of his own oxen to dress for the stranger that was come unto him, but took the poor man's sheep, and dressed it for the man that was come to him. Then David was exceedingly wroth with the man, and said to Nathan, As the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die, and he shall restore the lamb fourfold, because he did this thing, and had no pity thereof. Then Nathan said to David, Thou art the man. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, and delivered thee out of the hand of Saul and gave thee thy Lord's house, 
and thy Lord's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel, and of Judah, and would moreover, if that had been too little, have given thee such and such things. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord, to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, because thou hast despised me, and taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Thus said the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, and will take thy wives before thine eyes, and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of his sin. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all Israel, and before the sun. Then David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast caused the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child that is born unto thee shall surely die. So Nathan departed unto his house, and the Lord struck the child that Uriah's wife bare unto David, and it was sick. David therefore besought God for the child, and fasted, and went in, and lay all night upon the earth. Then the elders of his house arose to come unto him, and to cause him to rise from the ground, but he would not. Neither did he eat meat with them. So on the seventh day the child died, and the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead. For they said, Behold, while the child was alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How then shall we say unto him, The child is dead, to vex him more? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is dead. Then David arose from the earth, and washed, and anointed himself, and changed his apparel, and came into the house of the Lord, and worshipped. And afterward came to his own house, and bade that they should set bread before him, and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive, but when the child was dead, thou didst rise up and eat meat. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept, for I said, Who can tell whether God will have mercy on me, that the child may live? But now being dead, wherefore should I now fast? Can I bring him again any more? I shall go to him, but he shall not return to me. And David comforted Bathsheba his wife, and went in unto her, and lay with her, and she bare a son, and he called his name Solomon. Also the Lord loved him, for the Lord had sent by Nathan the prophet, therefore he called his name Jedidiah, because the Lord loved him. Then Joab fought against Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and took the city of the kingdom. Therefore Joab sent messengers to David, saying, I have fought against Rabbah, and have taken the city of waters. Now therefore gather the rest of the people together, and besiege the city, that thou mayest take it, lest the victory be attributed to me. So David gathered all the people together, and went against Rabbah, and besieged it and took it. And he took their king's crown from his head, which weighed a talent of gold with precious stones, and it was set on David's head. And he brought away the spoil of the city in exceedingly great abundance. And he carried away the people that was therein, and put them under saws, and under iron harrows, 
and under axes of iron, and cast them into the tile kiln. Even thus did he with all the cities of the children of Ammon. Then David and all the people returned unto Jerusalem. Second Samuel Chapter 13 Now after this, so it was, that Absalom, the son of David, having a fair sister, whose name was Tamar, Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was sore vexed, that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for she was a virgin, and it seemed hard to Amnon to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend called Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man, who said unto him, Why art thou the king's son so lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? Then Amnon answered him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lie down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father shall come to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come, and give me meat, and let her dress meat in my sight, that I may see it, and eat it of her hand. So Amnon lay down, and made himself sick. And when the king came to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar my sister come, and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may receive meat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house, and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he lay down, and she took flour, and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan, and poured them out before him, but he would not eat. Then Amnon said, Cause ye every man to go out from me. So every man went out from him. Then Amnon said unto Tamar, Bring the meat into the chamber, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar took the cakes which she had made, and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had set them before him to eat, he took her, and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. But she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Commit not this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak to the king, for he will not deny me unto thee. Howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice, but being stronger than she, forced her, and lay with her. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Up, get thee hence. And she answered him, There is no cause, this evil, to put me away, is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hear her, but called his servant that served him, and said, Put this woman now out from me, and lock the door after her. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her, for with such garments were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out, and locked the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head, and rent the garment of diverse colors which was on her, and laid her hand on her head, and went her way crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? Now yet be still, my sister. He is thy brother. Let not this thing grieve thine heart. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. But when King David heard all these things, he was very wroth. And Absalom said unto his brother Amnon, Neither good nor bad. For Absalom hated Amnon, because he had forced his sister Tamar. And after the time of two years, 
Absalom had sheep shearers in Baal Hazer, which is beside Ephraim. And Absalom called all the king's sons. And Absalom came to the king and said, Behold now, thy servant hath sheep shearers. I pray thee that the king with his servants would go with thy servant. But the king answered Absalom, Nay, my son, I pray thee, let us not go all, lest we be chargeable unto thee. Yet Absalom lay sore upon him, howbeit he would not go, but thanked him. Then said Absalom, But, I pray thee, shall not my brother Amnon go with us? And the king answered him, Why should he go with thee? But Absalom was instant upon him, and he sent Amnon with him, and all the king's children. Now had Absalom commanded his servants, saying, Mark now when Amnon's heart is merry with wine, and when I say unto you, Smite Amnon, kill him, fear not, for have not I commanded you? Be bold, therefore, and play the men. And the servants of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. And all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. And while they were in the way, tidings came to David, saying, Absalom hath slain all the king's sons, and there is not one of them left. Then the king arose, and tore his garments, and lay on the ground, and all his servants stood by with their clothes rent. And Jonadab, the son of Shemiah, David's brother, answered, and said, Let not my lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon only is dead, because Absalom had reported so, since he forced his sister Tamar. Now therefore let not my lord the king take the thing so grievously, to think that all the king's sons are dead, for Amnon only is dead. Then Absalom fled, and the young man that kept the watch lift up his eyes, and looked, and behold, there came much people by the way of the hillside behind him. And Jonadab said unto the king, Behold, the king's sons come, as thy servant said, so it is. And as soon as he had left speaking, behold, the king's sons came, and lift up their voices, and wept. And the king also, and all his servants, wept exceedingly sore. But Absalom fled away, and went to Talmai, the son of Amihud, king of Geshur. And David mourned for his son every day. So Absalom fled, and went to Geshur, and was there three years. And king David desired to go forth unto Absalom, because he was pacified concerning Amnon, seeing he was dead. Second Samuel Chapter 14 Then Joab, the son of Zeruiah, perceived that the king's heart was toward Absalom. And Joab sent to Tekoa, and brought thence a subtle woman, and said unto her, I pray thee, feign thyself to mourn, and now put on mourning apparel, and anoint not thyself with oil, but be as a woman that had now long time mourned for the dead. And come to the king, and speak on this matter unto him. For Joab taught her what she should say. Then the woman of Tekoa spake unto the king, and fell down on her face to the ground, and did obeisance, and said, Help, O king. Then the king said unto her, what aileth thee? And she answered, I am indeed a widow, and mine husband is dead. And thine handmaid had two sons, and they two strove together in the field, and there was none to part them. So the one smote the other, and slew him. And behold, the whole family is risen against thine handmaid. And they said, Deliver him that smote his brother, that we may kill him for the soul of his brother whom he slew, that we may destroy the heir also. So they shall quench my sparkle which is left, 
and shall not leave to mine husband neither name nor posterity upon the earth. And the king said unto the woman, Go to thine house, and I will give a charge for thee. Then the woman of Tekoa said unto the king, My lord, O king, this trespass be on me, and on my father's house, and the king and his throne be guiltless. And the king said, Bring him to me that speaketh against thee, and he shall touch thee no more. Then said she, I pray thee, let the king remember the Lord thy God, that thou wouldest not suffer many revengers of blood to destroy, lest they slay my son. And he answered, As the Lord liveth, there shall not one hair of thy son fall to the earth. Then the woman said, I pray thee, let thine handmaid speak a word to my lord the king. And he said, Say on. Then the woman said, Wherefore then hast thou thought such a thing against the people of God? Or why doth the king, as one which is faulty, speak this thing, that he will not bring again his banished? For we must needs die, and we are as water spilt on the ground, which cannot be gathered up again. Neither doth God spare any person, yet doth he appoint means, not to cast out from him him that is expelled. Now therefore that I am come to speak of this thing unto my lord the king, the cause is that the people have made me afraid. Therefore thine handmaid said, Now will I speak unto the king. It may be that the king will perform the request of his handmaid. For the king will hear, to deliver his handmaid out of the hand of the man that would destroy me and also my son from the inheritance of God. Therefore thine handmaid said, The word of my lord the king shall now be comfortable, for my lord the king is even as an angel of God in hearing of good and bad. Therefore the lord thy God be with thee. Then the king answered, and said unto the woman, Hide not from me, I pray thee, the thing that I shall ask thee. And the woman said, Let my lord the king now speak. And the king said, Is not the hand of Joab with thee in all this? Then the woman answered and said, As thy soul liveth, my lord the king, I will not turn to the right hand nor to the left from aught that my lord the king hath spoken. For even thy servant Joab bade me, and he put all these words in the mouth of thine handmaid. For to the intent that I should change the form of speech, thy servant Joab hath done this thing. But my lord is wise, according to the wisdom of an angel of God, to understand all things that are in the earth. And the king said unto Joab, Behold now, I have done this thing. Go then and bring the young man Absalom again. And Job fell to the ground on his face, and bowed himself, and thanked the king. Then Job said, This day thy servant knoweth, that I have found grace in thy sight, my lord the king, in that the king hath fulfilled the request of his servant. And Job arose, and went to Geshur, and brought Absalom to Jerusalem. And the king said, let him turn to his own house, and not see my face. So Absalom turned to his own house, and saw not the king's face. Now in all Israel there was none to be so much praised for beauty as Absalom. From the sole of his foot, even to the top of his head, there was no blemish in him. And when he polled his head, for at every year's end he polled it, because it was too heavy for him, therefore he polled it, he weighed the hair of his head at two hundred shekels by the king's weight. And Absalom had three sons and one daughter named Tamar, which was a fair woman to look upon. So Absalom dwelt the space of two years in Jerusalem and saw not the king's face. Therefore Absalom sent for Job to send him to the king, but he would not come to him. And when he sent again, he would not come. Therefore he said unto his servants, Behold, Job hath a field by my place, and hath barley therein. Go, and set it on fire. 
and Absalom's servants set the field on fire. Then Joab arose, and came to Absalom unto his house, and said unto him, Wherefore have thy servants burnt my field with fire? And Absalom answered Joab, Behold, I sent for thee, saying, Come thou hither, and I will send thee to the king for to say, Wherefore am I come from Geshur? It had been better for me to have been there still. Now therefore let me see the king's face, and if there be any trespass in me, let him kill me. Then Joab came to the king, and told him, and he called for Absalom, who came to the king, and bowed himself to the ground on his face before the king, and the king kissed Absalom. Second Samuel Chapter 15 After this Absalom prepared him chariots and horses and fifty men to run before him. And Absalom rose up early and stood hard by the entering in of the gate, and every man that had any matter, and came to the king for judgment, him did Absalom call unto him, and said, Of what city art thou? And he answered, Thy servant is of one of the tribes of Israel. Then Absalom said unto him, See, thy matters are good and righteous, but there is no man deputed of the king to hear thee. Absalom said moreover, O oh, that I were made judge in the land, that every man which hath any matter of controversy might come to me, that I might do him justice. And when any man came near to him, and did him obeisance, he put forth his hand, and took him, and kissed him. And on this manner did Absalom to all Israel that came to the king for judgment. So Absalom stole the hearts of the men of Israel. And after forty years Absalom said unto the king, I pray thee, let me go to Hebron, and render my vow which I have vowed unto the Lord. For thy servant vowed a vow when I remained at Geshur in Aram, saying, If the Lord shall bring me again indeed to Jerusalem, I will serve the Lord. And the king said unto him, Go in peace. So he arose and went to Hebron. Then Absalom sent spies throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, When ye hear the sound of the trumpet, ye shall say, Absalom reigneth in Hebron. And with Absalom went two hundred men out of Jerusalem that were called. And they went in their simplicity, knowing nothing. Also Absalom sent for Ahithophel the Gilonite, David's counselor, from his city Gilo, while he offered sacrifices. And the treason was great, for the people increased still with Absalom. Then came a messenger to David, saying, The hearts of the men of Israel are turned after Absalom. Then David said unto all his servants that were with him at Jerusalem, Up, and let us flee, for we shall not escape from Absalom. Make speed to depart, lest he come suddenly and take us, and bring evil upon us, and smite the city with the edge of the sword. And the king's servants said unto him, Behold, thy servants are ready to do according to all that my lord the king shall appoint. So the king departed, and all his household after him. And the king left ten concubines to keep the house. And the king went forth, and all the people after him, and tarried in a place far off. And all his servants went about him, and all the Kirathites, and all the Pelathites, and all the Gittites even six hundred men, which were come after him from Gath, went before the king. Then said the king to Ittai the Gittite, Wherefore comest thou also with us? Return, and abide with the king, for thou art a stranger. Depart thou therefore to thy place. Thou camest yesterday, and should I cause thee to wander today and go with us? I will go whither I can. Therefore return thou, and carry again thy brethren. Mercy and truth be with thee. And Ittai answered the king, and said, As the Lord liveth, and as my lord the king liveth, in what place my lord the king shall be, whether in death or life, even there surely will thy servant be. Then said David to Ittai, Come, and go forward. And Ittai the Gittite went, and all his men, 
and all the children that were with him. And all the country wept with a loud voice, and all the people went forward. But the king passed over the brook Kidron, and all the people went over toward the way of the wilderness. And lo, Zadok also was there, and all the Levites with him, bearing the ark of the covenant of God. And they set down the ark of God, and Abiathar went up until the people were all come out of the city. Then the king said unto Zadok, Carry the ark of God again into the city. If I shall find favor in the eyes of the Lord, he will bring me again, and show me both it and the tabernacle thereof. But if he thus say, I have no delight in thee, behold, here am I. Let him do to me as seemeth good in his eyes. The king said again unto Zadok the priest, Art not thou a seer? Return into the city in peace, and your two sons with you, to wit, Ahimeaz thy son, and Jonathan the son of Abiathar. Behold, I will tarry in the fields of the wilderness until there come some word from you to be told me. Zadok therefore and Abiathar carried the ark of God again to Jerusalem, and they tarried there. And David went up the Mount of Olives, and wept as he went up, and had his head covered, and went barefooted. And all the people that was with him had every man his head covered. And as they went up, they wept. Then one told David, saying, Ahithophel is one of them that have conspired with Absalom. And David said, O Lord, I pray thee, turn the counsel of Ahithophel into foolishness. Then David came to the top of the mount, where he worshipped God. And behold, Hushai, the archite, came against him with his coat torn, and having earth upon his head. Unto whom David said, If thou go with me, thou shalt be a burthen unto me. But if thou return to the city, and say unto Absalom, I will be thy servant, O king, as I have been in time past thy father's servant, so will I now be thy servant, then thou mayest bring me the counsel of Ahithophel to naught. And hast thou not there with thee Zadok and Abiathar the priests? Therefore whatsoever thou shalt hear out of the king's house, thou shalt show to Zadok and Abiathar the priests. Behold, there are with them their two sons, Ahimeaz, Zadok's son, and Jonathan, Abiathar's son. By them also shall ye send me everything that ye can hear. So Hushai, David's friend, went into the city, and Absalom came into Jerusalem. Second Samuel Chapter 16 When David was a little past the top of the hill, behold, Ziba, the servant of Mephibosheth, met him with a couple of asses saddled, and upon them two hundred cakes of bread, and an hundred bunches of raisins, and an hundred of dried figs, and a bottle of wine. And the king said unto Ziba, What meanest thou by these? And Ziba said, They be asses for the king's household to ride on, and bread, and dried figs for the young men to eat, and wine, that the faint may drink in the wilderness. And the king said, But where is thy master's son? Then Ziba answered the king, Behold, he remaineth in Jerusalem, for he said, This day shall the house of Israel restore me the kingdom of my father. Then said the king to Ziba, Behold, thine are all that pertained unto Mephibosheth. And Ziba said, I beseech thee, let me find grace in thy sight, my lord, O king. And when king David came to Behurim, behold, thence came out a man of the family of the house of Saul named Shimei, the son of Gera, and he came out and cursed. And he cast stones at David and at all the servants of King David, and all the people, and all the men of war were on his right hand and on his left. And thus said Shimei when he cursed, Come forth, come forth, thou murderer and wicked man. The Lord hath brought upon thee all the blood of the house of Saul, in whose stead thou hast reigned. 
and the Lord hath delivered thy kingdom into the hand of Absalom thy son. And behold, thou art taken in thy wickedness, because thou art a murderer. Then said Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, unto the king, Why doth this dead dog curse my lord the king? Let me go, I pray thee, and take away his head. But the king said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? For he curseth, even because the Lord hath bidden him curse David. Who dare then say, Wherefore hast thou done so? And David said to Abishai, and to all his servants, Behold, my son, which came out of mine own bowels, seeketh my life. Then how much more now may this son of Benjamin? Suffer him to curse, for the Lord hath bidden him. It may be that the Lord will look on mine affliction, and do me good for his cursing this day. And as David and his men went by the way, Shimei went by the side of the mountain over against him, and cursed as he went, and threw stones against him, and cast dust. Then came the king, and all the people that were with him, weary, and refreshed themselves there. And Absalom, and all the people, the men of Israel, came to Jerusalem, and Ahithophel with them. And when Hushai the archite, David's friend, was come unto Absalom, Hushai said unto Absalom, God save the king, God save the king. Then Absalom said to Hushai, Is this thy kindness to thy friend? Why wentest thou not with thy friend? Hushai then answered unto Absalom, Nay, but whom the Lord and this people and all the men of Israel choose, his will I be, and with them will I dwell. And moreover, unto whom shall I do service? Not to his son? As I served before thy father, so will I before thee. Then spake Absalom to Ahithophel, Give counsel what we shall do. And Ahithophel said unto Absalom, Go into thy father's concubines, which he hath left to keep the house. And when all Israel shall hear that thou art abhorred of thy father, the hands of all that are with thee shall be strong. So they spread Absalom a tent upon the top of the house, and Absalom went in to his father's concubines in the sight of all Israel. And the counsel of Ahithophel, which he counseled in those days, was like as one had asked counsel at the oracle of God. So was all the counsel of Ahithophel, both with David and with Absalom. Second Samuel Chapter 17 Moreover, Ahithophel said to Absalom, Let me choose out now twelve thousand men, and I will up and follow after David this night, and I will come upon him, for he is weary and weak-handled. So I will fear him, and all the people that are with him shall flee, and I will smite the king only, and I will bring again all the people unto thee, and when all shall return, the man whom thou seekest being slain, all the people shall be in peace. And the saying pleased Absalom well, and all the elders of Israel. Then said Absalom, Call now Hushai the archite also, and let us hear likewise what he saith. So when Hushai came to Absalom, Absalom spake unto him, saying, Ahithophel hath spoken thus, Shall we do after his saying, or no? Tell thou. Hushai then answered unto Absalom, The counsel that Ahithophel hath given is not good at this time. For, said Hushai, Thou knowest thy father and his men, that they be strong men, and are chafed in mind, as a bear robbed of her whelps in the field. Also thy father is a valiant warrior, and will not lodge with the people. Behold, he is hid now in some cave or in some place, and though some of them be overthrown at the first, yet the people shall hear, and say, The people that follow Absalom be overthrown. Then he also that is valiant, whose heart is as the heart of a lion, shall shrink and faint. For all Israel knoweth that thy father is valiant, and they which be with him stout men. Therefore my counsel is that all Israel be gathered unto thee, from Dan even to Beersheba, as the sand of the sea in number, and that thou go to battle in thine own person. 
so shall we come upon him in some place where we shall find him, and we will upon him as the dew falleth on the ground. And of all the men that are with him, we will not leave him one. Moreover, if he be gotten into a city, then shall all the men of Israel bring ropes to that city, and we will draw it into the river, until there be not one small stone found there. Then Absalom and all the men of Israel said, The counsel of Hushai the archite is better than the counsel of Ahithophel. For the Lord had determined to destroy the good counsel of Ahithophel, that the Lord might bring evil upon Absalom. Then said Hushai unto Zadok and Abiathar the priests, Of this and that manner did Ahithophel and the elders of Israel counsel Absalom, and thus and thus have I counseled. Now therefore send quickly, and show David, saying, Tarry not this night in the fields of the wilderness, but rather get thee over, lest the king be devoured, and all the people that are with him. Now Jonathan and Ahimeaz abode by Enrogel, for they might not be seen to come into the city. And a maid went and told them, and they went and showed King David. Nevertheless a young man saw them, and told it to Absalom. Therefore they both departed quickly, and came to a man's house in Bahurim, who had a well in his court, into the which they went down. And the wife took and spread a covering over the well's mouth, and spread ground corn thereon, that the thing should not be known. And when Absalom's servants came to the wife into the house, they said, Where is Ahimeaz and Jonathan? And the woman answered them, They be gone over the brook of water. And when they had sought them, and could not find them, they returned to Jerusalem. And as soon as they were departed, the other came out of the well, and went and told King David, and said unto him, Up, and get you quickly over the water, for such counsel hath Ahithophel given against you. Then David arose, and all the people that were with him, and they went over Jordan until the dawning of the day, so that there lacked not one of them that was not come over Jordan. Now when Ahithophel saw that his counsel was not followed, he saddled his ass, and arose, and he went home unto his city, and put his household in order, and hanged himself, and died, and was buried in his father's grave. Then David came to Mahanaim, and Absalom passed over Jordan, he and all the men of Israel with him. And Absalom made Amasa captain of the host, in the stead of Joab which Amasa was a man's son named Jithra, an Israelite, that went into Abigail, the daughter of Nahish, sister to Zeruiah, Job's mother. So Israel and Absalom pitched in the land of Gilead. And when David was come to Mahanaim, Shobai, the son of Nahash, out of Rabbah of the children of Ammon, and Maker, the son of Amiel, out of Lodabar, and Barzillai the Gileadite, out of Rogalom, brought beads, and basins, and earthen vessels, and wheat, and barley, and flour, and parched corn, and beans, and lentils, and parched corn. And they brought honey, and butter, and sheep, and cheese of kine for David and for the people that were with him to eat. For they said, The people is hungry, and weary, and thirsty in the wilderness. Second Samuel Chapter 18 Then David numbered the people that were with him, and set over them captains of thousands and captains of hundreds. And David sent forth the third part of the people under the hand of Joab, and the third part under the hand of Abishai, Joab's brother, the son of Zeruiah, and the other third part under the hand of Ittai the Gittite. And the king said unto the people, I will go with you myself also. But the people answered, Thou shalt not go forth, for if we flee away, they will not regard us, neither will they pass for us, though half of us were slain. But thou art now worth ten thousand of us. Therefore now it is better that thou succor us out of the city. Then the king said unto them, What seemeth you best that I will do? So the king stood by the gate side, and all the people came out by hundreds and by thousands. And the king commanded Joab, and Abishai, and Ittai, 
saying, Entreat the young man Absalom gently for my sake. And all the people heard when the king gave all the captains charge concerning Absalom. So the people went out into the field to meet Israel, and the battle was in the wood of Ephraim, where the people of Israel were slain before the servants of David. So there was a great slaughter that day, even of twenty thousand. For the battle was scattered over all the country, and the wood devoured much more people that day than did the sword. Now Absalom met the servants of David, and Absalom rode upon a mule, and the mule came under a great thick oak. And his head caught hold of the oak, and he was taken up between the heaven and the earth. And the mule that was under him went away. And one that saw it told Job, saying, Behold, I saw Absalom hanged in an oak. Then Job said unto the man that told him, And hast thou indeed seen? Why then didst thou not there smite him to the ground? And I would have given thee ten shekels of silver and a girdle. Then the man said unto Job, Though I should receive a thousand shekels of silver in mine hand, yet would I not lay mine hand upon the king's son. For in our hearing the king charged thee, and Abishai, and Ittai, saying, Beware, lest any touch the young man Absalom. If I had done it, it had been the danger of my life, for nothing can be hid from the king. Yea, thou thyself wouldest have been against me. Then said Job, I will not thus tarry with thee. And he took three darts in his hand, and thrust them through Absalom, while he was yet alive in the midst of the oak. And ten servants that bare Job's armor compassed about and smote Absalom, and slew him. Then Job blew the trumpet, and the people returned from pursuing after Israel, for Job held back the people. And they took Absalom, and cast him into a great pit in the wood, and laid a mighty great heap of stones upon him. And all Israel fled, every one to his tent. Now Absalom in his lifetime had taken and reared him up a pillar, which is in the king's dale. For he said, I have no son to keep my name in remembrance. And he called the pillar after his own name, and it is called unto this day, Absalom's place. Then said Ahimaaz, the son of Zadok, I pray thee, let me run and bear the king tidings that the Lord hath delivered him out of the hand of his enemies. And Job said unto him, Thou shalt not be the messenger to day, but thou shalt bear tidings another time. But to day thou shalt bear none, for the king's son is dead. Then said Job to Cushai, Go, Tell the king what thou hast seen. And Cushai bowed himself unto Job, and ran. Then said Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok, again to Job, What, I pray thee, if I also run after Cushai? And Job said, Wherefore now wilt thy run, my son, seeing that thou hast no tidings to bring? Yet what if I run? Then he said unto him, Run, so Ahimeaz ran by the way of the plain, and overwent Cushai. Now David sat between the two gates, and the watchman went to the top of the gate upon the wall, and lift up his eyes, and saw, and behold, a man came running alone. And the watchman cried, and told the king, and the king said, If he be alone, he bringeth tidings. And he came apace, and drew near. And the watchman saw another man running, and the watchman called unto the potter, and said, Behold, another man runneth alone. And the king said, He also bringeth tidings. And the watchman said, Methinketh the running of the foremost is like the running of Ahimeaz, the son of Zadok. Then the king said, He is a good man, and cometh with good tidings. And Ahimeaz called, and said unto the king, Peace be with thee. And he fell down to the earth upon his face before the king, and said, Blessed be the Lord thy God, who hath shut up the men that lift up their hands against my lord the king. 
And the king said, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Ahimeaz answered, When Job sent the king's servant, and me thy servant, I saw great tumult, but I knew not what. And the king said unto him, Turn aside, and stand here. So he turned aside, and stood still. And behold, Cushai came, and Cushai said, Tidings, my lord the king, for the Lord hath delivered thee this day out of the hand of all that rose against thee. Then the king said unto Cushai, Is the young man Absalom safe? And Cushai answered, The enemies of my lord the king, and all that rise against thee to do thee hurt, be as that young man is. And the king was moved, and went up to the chamber over the gate, and wept. And as he went, thus he said, O my son Absalom, my son, my son Absalom, would God I had died for thee, O Absalom, my son, my son. Second Samuel Chapter 19 And it was told Job, Behold, the king weepeth and mourneth for Absalom. Therefore the victory of that day was turned into mourning to all the people. For the people heard say that day, The king sorroweth for his son. And the people went that day into the city secretly, as people confounded hide themselves when they flee in battle. So the king hid his face, and the king cried with a loud voice, My son, Absalom, Absalom, my son, my son. Then Job came into the house to the king, and said, Thou hast shamed this day the faces of all thy servants, which this day have saved thy life, and the lives of thy sons, and of thy daughters, and the lives of thy wives, and the lives of thy concubines, in that thou lovest thine enemies, and hatest thy friends. For thou hast declared this day that thou regardest neither thy princes nor servants. Therefore this day I perceive that if Absalom had lived, and we all had died this day, that then it would have pleased thee well. Now therefore up, come out, and speak comfortably unto thy servants. For I swear by the Lord, except thou come out, there will not tarry one man with thee this night, and that will be worse unto thee than all the evil that fell on thee from thy youth hitherto. Then the king arose, and sat in the gate. And they told unto all the people, saying, Behold, the king doth sit in the gate. And all the people came before the king, for Israel had fled every man to his tent. Then all the people were at strife throughout all the tribes of Israel, saying, the king saved us out of the hand of our enemies, and he delivered us out of the hand of the Philistines. And now he is fled out of the land for Absalom. And Absalom, whom we anointed over us, is dead in battle. Therefore why are ye so slow to bring the king again? But King David sent to Zadok and to Abiathar the priests, saying, Speak unto the elders of Judah, and say, why are ye behind to bring the king again to his house? For the saying of all Israel is come unto the king, even to his house. Ye are my brethren, my bones, and my flesh are ye. Wherefore then are ye the last that bring the king again? Also say ye to Amasa, Art thou not my bone and my flesh? God do so to me, and more also, if thou be not captain of the host to me for ever in the room of Job. So he bowed the hearts of all the men of Judah, as of one man. Therefore they sent to the king, saying, Return thou with all thy servants. So the king returned, and came to Jordan, and Judah came to Gilgal, for to go to meet the king, and to conduct him over Jordan. And Shimei, the son of Gera, the son of Benjamin, which was of Bahurim, hasted, and came down with the men of Judah to meet King David. 
and a thousand men of Benjamin with him. And Ziba, the servant of the house of Saul, and his fifteen sons, and twenty servants with him. And they went over Jordan before the king. And there went over a boat, to carry over the king's household, and to do him pleasure. Then Shimei the son of Gera fell before the king, when he was come over Jordan, and said unto the king, Let not my lord impute wickedness unto me, nor remember the thing that thy servant did wickedly, when my lord the king departed out of Jerusalem, that the king should take it to his heart. For thy servant doth know that I have done amiss. Therefore, behold, I am the first this day of all the house of Joseph that am come to go down to meet my lord the king. But Abishai the son of Zeruiah answered and said, Shall not Shimei die for this, because he cursed the Lord's anointed? And David said, What have I to do with you, ye sons of Zeruiah? that this day ye should be adversaries unto me. Shall there any man die this day in Israel? For do not I know that I am this day king over Israel? Therefore the king said unto Shimei, Thou shalt not die. And the king swore unto him. And Mephibosheth, the son of Saul, came down to meet the king, and had neither washed his feet nor dressed his beard nor washed his clothes from the time the king departed until he returned in peace. And when he was come to Jerusalem and met the king, the king said unto him, Wherefore wentest not thou with me, Mephibosheth? And he answered, My lord the king, my servant deceived me, for thy servant said, I would have mine ass saddled to ride thereon, for to go with the king, because thy servant is lame and he hath accused thy servant unto my lord the king. But my lord the king is as an angel of God. Do therefore thy pleasure, for all my father's house were but dead men before my lord the king. Yet didst thou set thy servant among them that did eat at thine own table. What right therefore have I yet to cry any more unto the king? And the king said unto him, Why speakest thou any more of thy matters? I have said, Thou and Ziba divide the lands. And Mephibosheth said unto the king, Yea, let him take all, seeing my lord the king is come home in peace. Then Barzillai the Gileadite came down from Rogalim, and went over Jordan with the king to conduct him over Jordan. Now Barzillai was a very aged man, even fourscore years old, and he had provided the king of sustenance while he lay at Mahanaim, for he was a man of very great substance. And the king said unto Barzillai, Come over with me, and I will feed thee with me in Jerusalem. And Barzillai said unto the king, How long have I to live, that I should go up with the king to Jerusalem? I am this day fourscore years old, and can I discern between good or evil? Hath thy servant any taste in that I eat? or in that I drink? Can I hear any more the voice of singing men and women? Wherefore then should thy servant be any more a burthen unto my lord the king? Thy servant will go a little way over Jordan with the king. And why will the king recompense it me with such a reward? I pray thee, let thy servant turn back again, that I may die in mine own city, and be buried in the grave of my father and of my mother. But behold thy servant Chimam. Let him go with my lord the king, and do to him what shall please thee. And the king answered, Chimam shall go with me, and I will do to him that thou shalt be content with. And whatsoever thou shalt require of me, that will I do for thee. So all the people went over Jordan, and the king passed over, and the king kissed Barzillai, and blessed him and he returned unto his own place. Then the king went to Gilgal, and Chimam went with him. And all the people of Judah conducted the king, and also half the people of Israel. And behold, all the men of Israel came to the king, and said unto the king, Why have our brethren, the men of Judah, stolen thee away, and have brought the king and his household? 
and all David's men with him over Jordan. And all the men of Judah answered the men of Israel, Because the king is near of kin to us, and wherefore now be ye angry for this matter? Have we eaten of the king's cost, or have we taken any bribes? And the men of Israel answered the men of Judah, and said, We have ten parts in the king, and have also more right to David than ye. Why then did ye despise us, that our advice should not be first had in restoring our king? And the words of the men of Judah were fiercer than the words of the men of Israel. 2 Samuel Chapter 20 Then there was come thither a wicked man named Sheba, the son of Bichri, a man of Benjamin. And he blew the trumpet and said, We have no part in David, neither have we inheritance in the son of Ishai. Every man to his tent, O Israel. So every man of Israel went from David and followed Sheba, the son of Bichri. But the men of Judah clave fast unto their king, from Jordan even to Jerusalem. When David then came to his house to Jerusalem, the king took the ten women, his concubines, that he had left behind him to keep the house, and put them in ward, and fed them, but lay no more with them. But they were enclosed unto the day of their death, living in widowhood. Then said the king to Amasa, Assemble me the men of Judah within three days, and be thou here present. So Amasa went to assemble Judah, but he tarried longer than the time which he had appointed him. Then David said to Abishai, Now shall Sheba the son of Bichri do us more harm than did Absalom. Take thou therefore thy lord's servants, and follow after him, lest he get him walled cities, and escape us. And there went out after him Job's men, and the Kirathites, and the Pelathites, and all the mighty men. And they departed out of Jerusalem to follow after Sheba, the son of Bichri. When they were at the great stone, which is in Gibeon, Amasa went before them. And Job's garment that he had put on was girded unto him, and upon it was a sword girded, which hanged on his loins in the sheath and as he went it used to fall out. And Job said to Amasa, Art thou in health, my brother? And Job took Amasa by the beard with the right hand to kiss him. But Amasa took no heed to the sword that was in Job's hand, for therewith he smote him in the fifth rib, and shed out his bowels to the ground, and smote him not the second time. So he died. Then Job and Abishai his brother followed after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And one of Job's men stood by him, and said, He that favoreth Job, and he that is of David's part, let him go after Job. And Amasa wallowed in blood in the midst of the way, and when the man saw that all the people stood still, he removed Amasa out of the way into the field, and cast a cloth upon him because he saw that every one that came by him stood still. When he was removed out of the way, every man went after Job, to follow after Sheba, the son of Bichri. And he went through all the tribes of Israel, unto Abel, and Bethmaacah, and all places of Beerim. And they gathered together, and went also after him. So they came, and besieged him in Abel, near to Bethmaacah, and they cast up a mount against the city. And the people thereof stood on the rampart, and all the people that was with Job destroyed and cast down the wall. Then cried a wise woman out of the city, Hear, hear, I pray you, say unto Job, Come thou hither, that I may speak with thee. And when he came near unto her, the woman said, Art thou Job? And he answered, Yea. And she said to him, Hear the words of thine handmaid. And he answered, I do hear. Then she spake thus. They spake in the old time, saying, They should ask of Abel. And so they have continued. I am one of them that are peaceable and faithful in Israel, 
and thou goest about to destroy a city and a mother in Israel. Why wilt thou devour the inheritance of the Lord? And Joab answered and said, God forbid, God forbid it me, that I should devour or destroy it. The matter is not so, but a man of Mount Ephraim, Sheba, the son of Bichri by name, hath lift up his hand against the king, even against David. Deliver us him only, and I will depart from the city. And the woman said unto Joab, Behold, his head shall be thrown to thee over the wall. Then the woman went unto all the people with her wisdom, and they cut off the head of Sheba the son of Bichri, and cast it to Joab. Then he blew the trumpet, and they retired from the city, every man to his tent. And Joab returned to Jerusalem unto the king. Then Joab was over all the host of Israel. And Benaiah the son of Jehoiada over the Kirathites, and over the Pelathites. And Adoram over the tribute. And Jehoshaphat the son of Elihud the recorder. And Sheva was scribe. And Zadok and Abiathar the priests. And also Ira the Jairite was chief about David. Second Samuel Chapter 21 Then there was a famine in the days of David, three years together. And David asked counsel of the Lord. And the Lord answered, It is for Saul and for his bloody house, because he slew the Gibeonites. Then the king called the Gibeonites and said unto them, Now the Gibeonites were not of the children of Israel, but a remnant of the Amorites, unto whom the children of Israel had sworn. But Saul sought to slay them for his zeal toward the children of Israel and Judah. And David said unto the Gibeonites, What shall I do for you, and wherewith shall I make the atonement, that ye may bless the inheritance of the Lord? The Gibeonites then answered him, We will have no silver nor gold of Saul, nor of his house, neither for us shalt thou kill any man in Israel. And he said, What ye shall say, that will I do for you. Then they answered the king, The man that consumed us, and that imagined evil against us, so that we are destroyed from remaining in any coast of Israel, let seven men of his sons be delivered unto us, and we will hang them up unto the Lord in Gibeah of Saul, the Lord's chosen. And the king said, I will give them. But the king had compassion on Mephibosheth, the son of Jonathan, the son of Saul, because of the Lord's oath that was between them, even between David and Jonathan, the son of Saul. But the king took the two sons of Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, whom she bare unto Saul, even Armoni and Mephibosheth, and the five sons of Michael, the daughter of Saul, whom she bare to Adriel, the son of Barzillai, the Maholathite. And he delivered them unto the hands of the Gibeonites, which hanged them in the mountain before the Lord. So they died, all seven together. And they were slain in the time of harvest, in the first days, and in the beginning of barley harvest. Then Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, took sackcloth and hanged it up for her upon the rock, from the beginning of harvest until water dropped upon them from the heaven, and suffered neither the birds of the air to light on them by day, nor beasts of the field by night. And it was told David what Rizpah, the daughter of Aiah, the concubine of Saul, had done. And David went and took the bones of Saul and the bones of Jonathan, his son, from the citizens of Jabesh-Gilead, which had stolen them from the street of Bethshan, where the Philistines had hanged them, when the Philistines had slain Saul in Gilboa. So he brought thence the bones of Saul, and the bones of Jonathan his son, and they gathered the bones of them that were hanged. And the bones of Saul and of Jonathan his son buried they in the country of Benjamin, in Zela, in the grave of Kish his father. And when they had performed all that the king had commanded, God was then appeased with the land. Again the Philistines hath war with Israel. And David went down, and his servants with him, and they fought against the Philistines. And David fainted. 
then Ishbibinab, which was of the sons of Herapha, the head of whose spear weighed three hundred shekels of brass, even he, being girded with a new sword, thought to have slain David. But Abishai, the son of Zeruiah, succored him, and smote the Philistine, and killed him. Then David's men swore unto him, saying, Thou shalt go no more out with us to battle, lest thou quench the light of Israel. And after this also there was a battle with the Philistines at Gob. Then Sibachai the Hushathite slew Saph, which was one of the sons of Herapha. And there was yet another battle in Gob with the Philistines, where Elhanan, the son of Jairah Oregim, a Bethlehemite, slew Goliath the Gittite, the staff of whose spear was like a weaver's beam. Afterward there was also a battle in Gath, where was a man of a great stature, and had on every hand six fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, who was also the son of Herapha. And when he reviled Israel, Jonathan the son of Shemia, the brother of David, slew him. These four were born to Herapha in Gath, and died by the hand of David, and by the hands of his servants. Second Samuel Chapter 22 And David spake the words of this song unto the Lord, what time the Lord had delivered him out of the hands of all his enemies, and out of the hand of Saul. And he said, The Lord is my rock, and my fortress, and he that delivereth me. God is my strength, in him will I trust, my shield, and the horn of my salvation, my high tower, and my refuge, my Savior. Thou hast saved me from violence. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be safe from mine enemies. For the pangs of death have compassed me, the floods of ungodliness have made me afraid. The sorrows of the grave compassed me about. The snares of death overtook me. But in my tribulation did I call upon the Lord and cry to my God. And he did hear my voice out of his temple, and my cry did enter into his ears. Then the earth trembled and quaked. The foundations of the heavens moved and shook because he was angry. Smoke went out at his nostrils, and consuming fire out of his mouth, coals were kindled thereat. He bowed the heavens also, and came down, and darkness was under his feet. And he rode upon cherub, and did fly, and he was seen upon the wings of the wind. And he made darkness a tabernacle round about him, even the gatherings of waters and the clouds of the air. At the brightness of his presence the coals of fire were kindled. The Lord thundered from heaven, and the Most High gave his voice. He shot arrows also, and scattered them, to wit lightning, and destroyed them. The channels also of the sea appeared. Even the foundations of the world were discovered by the rebuking of the Lord, and at the blast of the breath of his nostrils. He sent from above and took me. He drew me out of many waters. He delivered me from my strong enemy, and from them that hated me, for they were too strong for me. They prevented me in the day of my calamity. But the Lord was my stay and brought me forth into a large place. He delivered me, because he favored me. The Lord rewarded me according to my righteousness. According to the pureness of mine hands he recompensed me. For I kept the ways of the Lord, and did not wickedly against my God. For all his laws were before me, and his statutes I did not depart therefrom. I was upright also toward him, and have kept me from my wickedness. Therefore the Lord did reward me according to my righteousness, according to my pureness before his eyes. With the godly thou wilt show thyself godly. With the upright man thou wilt show thyself upright. With the pure 
thou wilt show thyself pure, and with the froward thou wilt show thyself froward. Thus thou wilt save the poor people, but thine eyes are upon the haughty to humble them. Surely thou art my light, O Lord, and the Lord will lighten my darkness. For by thee have I broken through an host, and by my God have I leaped over a wall. The way of God is uncorrupt. The word of the Lord is tried in the fire. He is a shield to all that trust in him. For who is God besides the Lord? And who is mighty save our God? God is my strength in battle, and maketh my way upright. He maketh my feet like hinds' feet, and hath set me upon mine high places. He teacheth mine hands to fight, so that a bowl of brass is broken with mine arms. Thou hast also given me the shield of thy salvation, and thy loving kindness hath caused me to increase. Thou hast enlarged my steps under me, and mine heels have not slid. I have pursued mine enemies and destroyed them, and have not turned again until I had consumed them. Yea, I have consumed them and thrust them through, and they shall not arise, but shall fall under my feet. For thou hast girded me with power to battle, and them that rose against me hast thou subdued under me. And thou hast given me the necks of mine enemies, that I might destroy them that hate me. They looked about, but there was none to save them, even unto the Lord, but he answered them not. Then did I beat them as small as the dust of the earth. I did tread them flat as the clay of the street, and did spread them abroad. Thou hast also delivered me from the contentions of my people. Thou hast preserved me to be the head over nations. The people which I knew not do serve me. Strangers shall be in subjection to me. As soon as they hear, they shall obey me. Strangers shall shrink away and fear in their privy chambers. Let the Lord live and blessed be my strength. And God, even the force of my salvation, be exalted. It is God that giveth me power to revenge me, and subdue the people under me, and rescueth me from mine enemies. Thou also hast lift me up from them that rose against me. Thou hast delivered me from the cruel man. Therefore I will praise thee, O Lord, among the nations, and will sing unto thy name. He is the tower of salvation for his king, and showeth mercy to his anointed, even to David, and to his seed forever. 2 Samuel Chapter 23 These also be the last words of David. David the son of Jesse saith, Even the man who was set up on high, the anointed of the God of Jacob, and the sweet singer of Israel, saith, The Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and his word was in my tongue. The God of Israel spake to me, the strength of Israel said, Thou shalt bear rule over men, being just, and ruling in the fear of God. Even as the morning light, when the sun riseth, the morning, I say, without clouds, so shall mine house be, and not as the grass of the earth is by the bright rain. For so shall not mine house be with God. For he hath made with me an everlasting covenant, perfect in all points, and sure. Therefore all mine health and whole desire is, that he will not make it grow so. But the wicked shall be every one as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken with hands. But the man that shall touch them must be defensed with iron or with the shaft of a spear, and they shall be burnt with fire in the same place. 
These be the names of the mighty men whom David hath. He that sat in the seat of wisdom, being chief of the princes, was a dino of Esni. He slew eight hundred at one time. And after him was Eleazar, the son of Dodo, the son of Ahohai, one of the three worthies with David, when they defied the Philistines, gathered there to battle, when the men of Israel were gone up. He arose and smote the Philistines until his hand was weary, and his hand clave unto the sword. And the Lord gave great victory the same day, and the people returned after him only to spoil. After him was Shammah, the son of Agi, the Hararite. For the Philistines assembled at a town where was a piece of a field full of lentils, and the people fled from the Philistines. But he stood in the midst of the field, and defended it, and slew the Philistines. So the Lord gave great victory. Afterward three of the thirty captains went down, and came to David in the harvest time, unto the cave of Adullam. And the host of the Philistines pitched in the valley of Rephaim. And David was then in an hold, and the garrison of the Philistines was then in Bethlehem. And David longed, and said, O oh, that one would give me to drink of the water of the well of Bethlehem, which is by the gate! Then the three mighty break into the host of the Philistines, and drew water out of the well of Bethlehem that was by the gate, and took and brought it to David, who would not drink thereof but poured it for an offering unto the Lord, and said, O Lord, be it far from me that I should do this. Is not this the blood of the men that went in jeopardy of their lives? Therefore he would not drink it. These things did these three mighty men. And Abishai, the brother of Job, the son of Zeruiah, was chief among the three and he lifted up his spear against three hundred, and slew them. And he had the name among the three. For he was most excellent of the three, and was their captain. But he attained not unto the first three. And Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man, which had done many acts, and was of Kabzeel, slew two strong men of Moab, he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit, in the time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a man of great stature. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand, but he went down to him with a staff, and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand, and slew him with his own spear. These things did Beniah, the son of Jehoiada, and had the name among the three worthies, he was honorable among thirty, but he attained not to the first three. And David made him of his counsel. Asahel, the brother of Job, was one of the thirty. Elhanan, the son of Dodo of Bethlehem. Shammoth the Herorite, Elika the Herodite, Helis the Paltite, Ira, the son of Ikish, the Tekoite, Abiezer, the Ananathite, Mebunai, the Hushathite, Zalman, an Ahohite, Meharai, the Netophathite, Helib, the son of Baana, a Netophathite, Ittai, the son of Rabbi, of Gibeah, of the children of Benjamin, Beniah, the Pirathonite, Hidai, of the river of Gaish, Abai Alban, the Arbathite, Asmavath, the Baramite, Eliabah, the Shalbanite, of the sons of Jashan, Jonathan, Shammah the Herorite, Ahiam the son of Sherer the Herorite, Eliphalet the son of Ahasbi, the son of Maacathai, Eliam the son of Ahithophel, the Gilanite, Hezri the Carmelite, Peari the Arbite, Igol the son of Nathan of Zoba, Benai the Gadite, Zelik the Ammonite, Neherai the Berothite, the armor bearer of Joab the son of Zeruiah, Ira the Ithrite, Gareb the Ithrite, Uriah the Hittite, thirty and seven in all. Second Samuel, chapter twenty-four. 
and the wrath of the Lord was again kindled against Israel. And he moved David against them, in that he said, Go, number Israel and Judah. For the king said to Joab, the captain of the host, which was with him, Go speedily now through all the tribes of Israel, from Dan even to Beersheba, and number ye the people, that I may know the number of the people. And Joab said unto the king, The Lord thy God increase the people an hundredfold more than they be, and that the eyes of my lord the king may see it. But why doth my lord the king desire this thing? Notwithstanding, the king's word prevailed against Joab and against the captains of the host. Therefore Joab and the captains of the host went out from the presence of the king to number the people of Israel. And they passed over Jordan and pitched in a roar at the right side of the city that is in the midst of the valley of Gad and toward Jazer. Then they came to Gilead and to Tatum Hochai. So they came to Dan Jaan and so about to Sidon and came to the fortress of Tyre, and to all the cities of the Hivites, and of the Canaanites, and went toward the south of Judah, even to Beersheba. So when they had gone about all the land, they returned to Jerusalem at the end of nine months and twenty days. And Joab delivered the number and sum of the people unto the king. And there were in Israel eight hundred thousand strong men that drew swords and the men of Judah were five hundred thousand men. Then David's heart smote him, after that he had numbered the people. And David said unto the Lord, I have sinned exceedingly in that I have done. Therefore now, Lord, I beseech thee, take away the trespass of thy servant, for I have done very foolishly. And when David was up in the morning, the word of the Lord came unto the prophet Gad, David's seer, saying, Go, and say unto David, Thus saith the Lord, I offer thee three things, choose thee which of them I shall do unto thee. So Gad came to David, and showed him, and said unto him, Wilt thou that seven years' famine come upon thee in thy land, or wilt thou flee three months before thine enemies, they following thee, or that there be three days' pestilence in my land? Now advise thee, and see what answer I shall give to him that sent me. And David said unto Gad, I am in a wonderful strait. Let us fall now into the hand of the Lord, for his mercies are great, and let me not fall into the hand of man. So the Lord sent a pestilence in Israel, from the morning even unto the time appointed. And there died of the people from Dan even to Beersheba, seventy thousand men. And when the angel stretched out his hand upon Jerusalem to destroy it, the Lord repented of the evil and said to the angel that destroyed the people, It is sufficient. Hold now thine hand. And the angel of the Lord was by the threshing place of Arona the Jebusite. And David spake unto the Lord when he saw the angel that smote the people and said, Behold, I have sinned, yea, I have done wickedly. But these sheep, what have they done? Let thine hand, I pray thee, be against me and against my father's house. So Gad came the same day to David, and said unto him, Go up, rear an altar unto the Lord, in the threshing floor of Arona the Jebusite. And David according to the saying of Gad, went up, as the Lord had commanded. And Arona looked, and saw the king and his servants coming toward him. And Arona went out, and bowed himself before the king on his face to the ground. And Arona said, Wherefore is my lord the king come to his servant? Then David answered, To buy the threshing floor of thee for to build an altar unto the Lord that the plague may cease from the people. Then Arona said unto David, Let my lord the king take, and offer what seemeth him good in his eyes. Behold, the oxen for the burnt offering, and chariots, and the instruments of the oxen for wood. 
All these things did Arona as a king give unto the king. And Arona said unto the king, The Lord thy God be favorable unto thee. Then the king said unto Arona, Not so, but I will buy it of thee at a price, and will not offer burnt offering unto the Lord my God of that which cost me nothing. So David bought the threshing floor and the oxen for fifty shekels of silver. And David built there an altar unto the Lord, and offered burnt offerings and peace offerings. And the Lord was appeased toward the land, and the plague ceased from Israel.